Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the midweek's edition of News at One Live on Metro TV. We are coming to you live from our studios here in Laboni, Accra. My name is Kwesi Efri. Let's have a look at the top stories for this afternoon's bulletin. General secretaries of political parties demand a comprehensive roadmap from the EC on the 2016 general elections. Ghana Water Company begins spilling excess water in the Wager Dam to avoid a system breakdown. <clears throat> Justice Paul Derry files another suit against the CID in an attempt to stop investigations into allegations of corruption against him. Former DBLA boss likely to face jail term if it is established he was negligent in the approval of a $3.6 million contract, which mysteriously shot up to $9.9 .9 million. Those were the headlines. Let's get into the details now. And the Ghana Water Company has begun spilling excess water in the Wager Dam. The exercise started a short while ago, and the company is alerting those living downstream, especially at Tetegu Oblogu, Pamro Salt, Ada, Kope, and nearby communities to relocate. In a statement, the company has warned the opening of the spillway gates may cause massive flooding along the lower course of the Dainsu River. Communities that are likely to be affected include Tetegu Oblogu, Pamro Salt, Lower McCarthy Hill, Weja, Bojo Beach, Adakope and other surrounding communities. The company says it is working with municipal and district assemblies, the National Disaster and Mobilization Organization, NADMO, and National Security to educate the general public on the essence of evacuating such communities to forestall any form of eventuality. The release also said the Ghana Water Company has put in place various measures such as dredging of some of the estuaries and tributaries to enable good flow of the excess water. It says these measures notwithstanding cannot guarantee the safety of people living in the flood zones. And so earlier this morning, head of communications of the company Stanley Marty told Metro News, those who defy directive do so at their own risk. He, however, hopes NADMO and national security are standing by. We have for the past one we've been informing the communities around. Um, the tributary of the wager dam, so so that they could evacuate before time. We have done so, and we have issued a press release informing the general public about it, and we are hoping that they will heed to our call to evacuate the place to forestall any eventuality. So we have done we have done our best in informing them. We have also informed all stakeholders, everybody who matter. We have informed them. The Minister Chief Executive and the Minister Assembly has been informed. All Assembly members within the area have, have been informed. And then uh, the Chiefs, opinion leaders, and everybody, those who own properties around, have also been informed. Now, there are some industries around. We also have the information. So uh, our expectation is that every uh, one will do what is expected of uh, him or her so that we wouldn't hear any, um, uh, any case of um, so I wouldn't hear any bad news. So we are hoping that everything will go well. Now, in the past, people have been reluctant to move. Have you secured buffer zones? Are you engaging the security to enforce uh, the relocation in case uh, people prove adamant? Yes, we have informed them, and it is their duty to do that. So not more is aware, national security is aware, the municipal assembly is also aware. So it is their duty to do those things. It is also their duty to make sure that all those who live in such unauthorized areas uh, um, should should be should be evacuated. And they, they, it is it is for them to do. So we have informed them to do that. For us, it is not within our merit. So whatever we have to do, or our remit, sorry, whatever we have to do, we, we have done so, and we expect that each and everyone will do what is expected of him or her. 
So we will not forestall any eventuality. And how long will this uh, spillage or this exercise last? Because most of the time, residents will be interested in knowing the timelines to inform uh, their planning in terms of location and relocation. Yeah, we can't actually tell uh, when exactly will end it. It depends on the inflows. Now, when there are more inflows, then we may have to stay. In a statement, the company has warned the opening of the spillway gates Well, so that was my executive producer, Erika Hanyo, speaking to Stanley Mate of the Ghana Water Company Limited. Let's get into some politics now. And the NDC executives of Wejagbawi, Klote Koli, Ada, and Shai Usuluku constituencies within the greater Accra region have been suspended for compromising their positions. At a press conference held in Accra, the greater Accra regional chairman, Adikuka, says the executives failed to comply with regulations to desist from interfering with the party's forthcoming primaries. My colleague Gabriel Obudai Toboashon was at the press conference and has filed this report. The National Democratic Congress has scheduled 21st November for its party's primaries, which is expected to elect its parliamentary candidates for the 2016 general elections. But with some few weeks to the primaries, there are reports of some constituency executives openly declaring their support for some aspirants, generating controversies among members. Those implicated are constituency executives of Kole Klote, Wei Jagbawi, Ada, and Shai Osudoku. At a press conference in Accra, NDC Greater Accra Regional Chairman Adekoka says those implicated have accordingly been asked to step aside. All constituency executives in the Shai Osudoku have been asked to step aside and should not have anything to do with the election matters in that constituency. They are therefore requested to submit all election materials in their custody to the regional executive. The same applies to other constituencies, including the constituency. An aspirant in the Wejagbawi constituency, Alkansia Yuku, has also been suspended for not using appropriate channels to address his grievances. Okansi Ayiku had a press conference with his team to make all manner of allegations against the party and other persons in the region. The Greater Accra Executives, as part of the program, launched its Agenda 2016 campaign with the quest to win majority votes in the Greater Accra region in the 2016 general elections. In line with this, the executives will organize a mammoth rally on 14th November at Manchagbona to make their success stories known to all Ghanaians. Right now, Justice Bauderi, who has been filing suits in an attempt to prevent an investigation into his conduct in the judicial corruption scandal, has dragged the police service to court. This time, the target is a police criminal investigations department. We will bring you that video shortly. But before that, an easy they say lies on the head that wears a crown. That is a case of COP John Kudalo as he takes over as acting inspector general of police. Members of parliament from both sides have been speaking to our parliamentary affairs correspondent Michael Oti on what they expect from the new IGP. President John Dramani Mahama on Monday, November 9, appointed COP John Kudalo as Acting Inspector General of Police as Mohammed Al Hassan commences his accumulated leave leading to his retirement. COP John Kudalo has over 20 years experience in investigative and operational policing at various departments within the Ghana Police Service. He is also a lecturer in ethics in law enforcement at the Ghana Police College. Despite his telling credentials as a peace officer, not everybody is impressed with how he conducts himself while on the field. There's a lot of statement being made since his appointment. The let my vote compliant when the police attack the demonstrators who were demonstrating peacefully. And the comments that he made justifying uh, the police action is making people to see more of a political police IGP than somebody who is coming to do his work. The Tema East MP says, although he has congratulated him on his elevation, he is advising the new IGP to remain neutral in all his dealings. Meanwhile, 
MP for Nantong, Mutala Mohammed says the MPP NP is only blowing hot air. As long as but His Excellency the President appoints can do the work, I don't think that anybody have any reason to. Of course, you would have people who would always raise questions about any appointment that is done by the President. I strongly believe that even if the President appoints Kofi Annan today, then people will raise issues with him. Every single appointment that is done by this government, they will raise issues with him. Of course, they have to engage themselves. They have to have something saying. He is of the view that the President has done consultations before appointing COP John Kudalo, and so he is confident that he will deliver on his mandate. As he takes over as acting IGP, many will be watching how COP John Kudalo will build on the initiatives of his immediate predecessor to improve on policing in Ghana, especially with election 2016 approaching. So all we can say for now is congratulations to the new acting IGP that law. Now, general secretaries of political parties are demanding the roadmap towards the 2016 general elections from the Electoral Commission. They also made a number of recommendations that will ensure the exercise is free, fair and peaceful after an IEA-sponsored meeting last week. Here is a brief desk report. As the issue included the NDC, NPP, the CPP and the PNC. The platform was provided by the Institute of Economic Affairs to offer stakeholders the opportunity to discuss key issues that border preparations and credibility of the next general elections. The party general secretaries meet every month under the IAEA Ghana Political Party's program to find solutions to and deliberate on pertinent national issues. At their last meeting last week, a key issue of concern to them that he raised is the purported management of the EC database by STL Company. They made key recommendations for safeguarding the interests of the nation before, during and after the elections. These are that the EC must be proactive and act with urgency in view of the closeness of the 2016 elections and publish a clear timetable of activities leading up to the elections. They should include plans for implementation of the recommendations submitted by the Electoral Reform Committee. Members called on the EC to publicly clarify the nature of its relationship with STL and clearly spell out the role STL will play in Ghana's 2016 elections. It noted, however, that there is wide consensus that a voter's register contains illegal entries and the EC must work with stakeholders to ensure the register for 2016 is credible and acceptable. The platform called on politicians to eschew pronouncements which tend to undermine the peace and coercion of the country. In particular, they cautioned against reckless threats to Ghana's peace and security as a way of getting the EC to meet their demands regarding the voters' register. On security, the general secretaries of the political parties expressed concern about the over-politicization of Ghana's security agencies. It called on them to act with professionalism and neutrality. It also demanded firm response to politically motivated crimes and a sure for prosecutions to serve as a deterrent. Finally, it condemned the practice where the media pitch one political party against the other and thereby incites the public. NDC was represented by its General Secretary, Johnson Asiedu Nketia, NPP Kwabne Japon, Niyama Komfra of the Convention People's Party, and Bernard Mona, who is also the General Secretary of the People's National Convention. You are still watching the midweek's edition of News at One. We have more stories coming up. Please stay with us.
You're welcome back from the break. Let's do some more stories now. And the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority have met with the Transport Committee of Parliament. Now, according to the former boss of the DVLA, Justice Amegashi, he signed a contract with Photo X Limited worth $3.6 million and is baffled as to how the final contract became $9.9 .9 million. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVL in 2012, entered into a 10-year agreement with Photo X to print driver's licenses, but inconsistencies in the contract sum and other issues have stalled its implementation. The Attorney General's Department, after investigations by Yoko, recommended that the contract be abrogated. On Tuesday, past and present officials of the DVLA met with the Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament to ascertain the details of the issue. A former CEO of DVLA, Justice Amegashi, explained to the committee members that he signed a contract for $3.6 million. I didn't have access to the soft copy. I never handled any document except to preside. So there is a team of which he, every document, the documentation that was brought was handled by the manager of procurement. So I cannot sit here and then give you a reasonable explanation as to why that figure came from 3.6. The former CEO could not provide any evidence to support his claim that the original contract sum was $3.6 million. It is true that PPA, the, the contract, the draft contract that was sent was 3.6. PPA approved the letter as he said. And I minuted to the manager procurement. And manager procurement, as since he was appointed on 2nd April uh, 2012 was responsible for the procurement of goods, works and services. The committee chairman, Theophilus Tetechai, said the revelation must serve as a warning to all public officials. What we need to do is to constantly monitor our institutions in terms of how they handle financial issues, especially when loan agreements and other things are brought to parliament. Former CEO of DVLA, Joe Osewusu, who doubles as MP for Bekwai, is advising the DVLA to take immediate steps to ensure that the activities return to normalcy. What is the basis for allowing him to say it belongs to me? The things are on your premises. You are using it. He has only two or three staff members there. And you say he claims it belongs to him. When you have documents, a contract which says it belongs to you, suck him. Due to the impasse between PhotoX and DVLA, Printing of driver's licenses has been halted. Now to a very interesting story here. Justice Poderio has been filing suits in an attempt to prevent an investigation into his conduct in the judicial corruption scandal has dragged in the police service. This time, the target is the Police Criminal Investigations Department. Derry is therefore seeking the following. A. A declaration that having regard to suit numbers AP228-15 and j one 2915 in court challenging the petition filed by the first defendant against the plaintiff, the second defendant cannot purport to investigate the plaintiff. B, a declaration that on a true and proper construction of Article 127, subsection 3 of the 1992 Constitution, the judgment delivered by the plaintiff in the case titled The Republic versus Kwame Jato in the exercise of the plaintiff's power as a justice of the Superior Court is immune from a civil or criminal proceedings for any act or omission by the plaintiff in the exercise of the said power. Well, we'll move away from that into some other stories now. And Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Harry Idrisu, is calling for a different approach to the teaching of technical, vocational education and training across Africa. In a speech read on his behalf at a forum on talent mobility across Africa, the sector minister urged private sector to partner with government to address issues bothering on graduate unemployment, education, policies and curricula. The private sector in many circles have been described as the engine of growth, but this critical engine can only fully contribute to economic transformation on the availability of human resource. 
It is in this vein that the African Center for Economic Transformation has been spearheading the idea of Intra-African Talent Mobility Partnership Program to provide analytical and coordination support to harmonize and ensure coherence in the approach of professionals to freely move across the continent to seek job opportunities in other countries. Director of the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, Marianne Addo, who spoke on behalf of the sector minister, called for private sector partnership to better leverage education and employment in the country. The youth do not only need jobs, they also create them. Africa's growing labor force can be an asset in the global marketplace. Realizing this brighter vision for Africa's future, however, will require a clear understanding of how to benefit from this asset. A senior lecturer, Center for Migration Studies at the University of Ghana, Dr. Joseph Tai says, despite the presence of free movement of goods and services, private sector is still facing challenges in growing their businesses in West Africa. So if somebody is moving from, say, Nigeria to come and work in our emerging oil and gas industry, such a person will need resident permit to work. And there are a lot of bottlenecks or obstacles to this mobility and settlement. So what this program aims to achieve is to re reduce some of these limitations. Issues bordering on skilled labor were also addressed. I say the devil is in implementation and what the talent mobility is trying to do is to help to have uh, to come to harmonize the, the various countries own policies laws and regulations to ensure that there is a common approach to dealing with movement of high skilled labor across the region. Meanwhile, the Center for Economic Transformation is helping build consensus on a draft framework to implement specific action plans. Frank Thank you very much. You're still watching News at One. It's now time for sports. My name is Prince Anand. Now, Youth and Sports Minister Dr. Ahmed Mustafa has called for a collaborative effort between the Ghana Football Association and his ministry to push for the passing of the sports bill when it appears in Parliament. At the ordinary congress of the Ghana Football Association, which ended on Tuesday, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, petitioned the Football Association to collaborate with the ministry to push for the passing of the sports bill. According to the Youth and Sports Minister, there is the need for the two bodies to come together to champion the cause, to ensure that there is a direction and a sustainable source of funding for sports in the country. The sports bill, when I came, had never gone to cabinet. I have taken it to cabinet. We have worked on this two times. It is at the subcommittee level. 
in fact, but for some discrepancy between sports and football, it should have been passed one month ago. But then the subcommittee was tasked to work and uh, remove all those doubts. So we want to uh, ensure that we get some amendments put in there that will uh, power the ministry, perhaps grant lines. So when the bill progresses from cabinet to parliament, it is now in the hands of parliament. Dr. Mustafa Ahmed as the Minister for Youth and Sports. Now let's do some international sports news now where Spain have launched their new kits ahead of their friendly game against the three Lions of England. The match is on Friday. Spain continued their preparations ahead of an international friendly against England on Friday. The defending European champions qualified for Euro 2016 in France with eight successive victories. But after a below par World Cup in Brazil in 2014, they'll hope to prepare meticulously. While England were unbeaten throughout their qualifiers, they also boast a better head-to-head -head with England winning on 12 occasions and La Roja 8. Later that evening, Spain unveiled a new kit which will be used in France next year. We're on it. Every national team who will go to France next year have the thrill and the eagerness to win the European title. And that's also, of course, our goal to defend what we got three years ago. Obviously, things won't be easy, so our idea is to make things the best that we can. La Roja were also crowned European champions back in 1964 and can become the first team to win four titles with victory in France next year. My team is always the best for me, not only the midfielders, but the whole national team. We're living a great moment with good players and a good game, and we're thrilled to defend the title and try to play a good part in the European Championship. That's it for the sports news. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Prince and News at One continues after this. Right. Thank you very much, Prince. So that does it for this uh, midweek's edition of News at One on Metro TV. I am Kwasi Afri. Thank you very much for watching. And keep watching Metro TV.